Hey guys, this is Bruce and I want to share with you today my journey in this passive income uh, path that uh, my wife and I have been taking. Now we, we go into a little bit um, more detail on our other channel which is Yuri TV but uh, here I want to kind of show you a little bit more I want something more in the weeds. So what I'm going to do here is show you my screen and uh, there's just something incredible happening and I'm learning quite a bit from this journey. So on the screen you'll see here uh, YouTube. YouTube has recently gone through a huge change and you might have already heard about it especially if you if you frequent YouTube. You watch these videos of um, all the famous people on YouTube. Uh, I follow it very closely because I'm officially a YouTuber. We've got 600 plus videos on between this channel and my other channels. Uh, we're officially YouTubers, right? We actually make some income off of it. It's not much, but uh, because of that, I'm I'm very in the weeds on on what's going on with YouTube. But here's there's been a recent boycott of the basically the advertisers have started boycotting YouTube and I'll talk about that in a minute unrelated to that I've got another income stream passive income stream called rev shares now you may have heard me talking about it on my other channel or this channel where I do in-depth breakdowns and walkthroughs of how to do it so it's similar with YouTube in that it is revenue sharing I mean YouTube they use AdSense and AdWords to share revenue to all the creators and they get that revenue from the actual publishers rev sharing platforms is kind of a new take on rev sharing where what they do is they have a website and then they advertise on that website you're a member of the website but you're both the publisher and the watcher and they just they share the revenue that they make from the products and services that they provide to all the members at a much higher rate than than you google does and uh anyway both of these things seemingly unrelated have had uh, drastic changes recently now I'm not surprised by the changes because I've been doing these sideline business things for a long time like you know like 10 years I've been doing these little sideline projects and what I found is that it changes constant like when you're in a market it just constantly changes and you just have to try to keep up with the change the second you don't keep up with it you're gone your revenue takes a dive something doesn't it doesn't work out for you anymore and that's what happened with me and blogs I got out of it for like a year and then bam was, by the time I got back in it was completely different lost my audience everything um, so I mean it still makes money actually which is incredible I didn't consider and I didn't do anything in it for like two two years or so um, now I do stuff on it now but it's kinda like I'm building from scratch alright so anyway what I wanna show you on the screen here is the boycott now let me just show you first of all what has changed in revenue sharing platforms and in Google's revenue sharing platform. So YouTube actually, actually let's just show you a quick article here. And this is an article from TheVerge.com, pretty good technical resource that you can go to. They're usually pretty unbiased about things. It's an okay uh, uh, online magazine. But it started off with in March, mid-March where the Wall Street Journal probably actually before that because they've done this a little bit before but it really kinda kicked off in March the Wall Street Journal reports that YouTube videos centered around racist homophobic and anti-semitic views are still scooping up ads ad brands like coca-cola Amazon and Microsoft um, this is even after reports last week that expose a massive advertising boycotts in UK and now in the US prompting Google to promise companies it would solve this issue and implement better tools for moderation and practices now to Google's defense they're actually really good about this it's just that the the advertisers don't know how to actually filter because there's a way is an now I know this because I am an advertiser I use Google's AdWords platform to sometimes advertise different things that I want advertised there's a filter in there that allows you to filter out certain keywords certain certain bad words if you don't want to be associated with hate groups just you can put things that you basically like a I think it's called a negative you can put uh, things that in there if, if this word pops up on this person's site don't 
do not display my ad. You can do that. It's it's actually a very effective tool uh, that allows you to pinpoint who's your audience and who you want your publishers to be. So I think it's actually pretty effective already, to be honest with you. But these advertisers, Coca-Cola, your Amazon, your Microsoft, all these other big, big names are very critical because I don't think that they're really doing that. They're kind of wanting to push all their stuff out to everyone and not and they're not filtering out who so there's anyway they're saying okay Google you fix it it's just your problem until you fix it I'm yanking my ads well this has had an effect on the creators like people like me who make videos who make the money off of their now I'm not all bent out of shape about it because I've got several other sources of income and it wasn't making that much in the first place for me but let me just show you that it does have an impact here now this is my revenue like from YouTube, we were at may averaging about ten dollars a day in February to March, and now it's kind of taking a dive. And this is all as a result, I think, as a result of the advertising uh, ban, right? So hopefully this gets resolved. YouTube is pushing forward by trying to fix the problem. Now the other thing I want to show you is what's happening in. Uh, one of the biggest and best my pay, um, ad revenue revenue sorry revenue sharing platforms which is called my paying ads and my paying crypto ads uh, created by brilliant Uday Nor Nara and maintained by uh, an incredible staff they're, they're very upfront about changes anyway they've recently made a huge change where it, it essentially effectively cuts the revenue that you can keep on one of the systems in half um, that's <laughs> that's a pretty big deal because um, a lot of people you know they're living off that income so without going into too many details it's it's kind of um, it's definitely impacted people's bottom line. I'll just put it. I'll just put it that way. It's it's a legit system. So if you have people saying it's a Ponzi scheme or it's a scam or anything like that, which we constantly get that, um, that kind of, those kind of comments. But that's just not true. You know, it's just not true. It's it's a real legitimate business. It's an advertising business. But uh, they have essentially changed, it, and that's the thing about RevShare is that they they change. They can change at a, a moment's notice. And proof point would be another revenue sharing. Uh, platform called my 24 which was my favorite because it was I was absolutely killing it on this <laughs> rev share platform they recently it was mismanaged it didn't go well and uh, long story short a lot of people lost their money because the business basically shut down and then merged with some other um, untested rev sharing platform and it might go it might do well um, it's, I think it's it's doing okay right now, but the point is, um, a lot of people's accounts um, are not worth what worth what they were before. That being said, a lot of people are really pissed off. So, this has all happened within the last couple months. And like I said, I am not surprised. I am a bit surprised about my 24. It was really it was really going well, and I expected a lot from it. I'm not surprised about the changes with MPA, MPCA or YouTube and the reason why is because I've been doing this for a while and things change you can't rely on just one source the big thing that I've learned from all of this is that mindset uh, is such a key factor with your success with success with really anything you do but especially with business what I'm seeing is that on YouTube People are panicking. There's some people who are panicking and saying things like, oh, this is the end of YouTube. It's going down. Even though they're expanding into cable now, YouTube's expanding into cable, right? Um, my kids do not know who the stars are on, cap on cable. They don't know who. They might know, like, and they might have heard the name Angelina Jolie, but they don't, like, really watch TV anymore. You know what I mean? They don't like. If you noticed, I don't know if you're an older person, if you're over the age of 25, you'll notice that the young people don't like really watch TV. Like they don't like, they don't watch cable. They don't watch the normal local TV. They only watch stuff that's online. Have you noticed that? They don't, like they know who PewDiePie is, but they don't know who, they might not know who Sam Jackson is. 
You know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, it's just, it's, there's a big generational gap ha that's happened with social media. People, the kids watch YouTube. They don't watch cable. They do not watch cable. So to think that, to say things like, oh, YouTube's gone, it's the end, YouTube's done, that just does not make any sense. That's just, uh, that statement is, it, it's like jumping to conclusions. And I noticed that there's people doing that uh, on you, the YouTube thing, the, the, the big change with YouTube, people are saying that. And then with the ref shares, people are saying that. People are saying, oh, it's the end, everything's, it's, it's, it's going to collapse now uh, for my paying crypto ads and my paying ads. And it's just not true. Um, essentially, because they're great business owners, um, YouTube and then my paying ads and some of the other rev shares out there and other opportunities, they're, if they're a good business owner, they adjust. They make adjustments. They have a they have a solution for every problem. But I just noticed that there's so many crybabies that have a problem for every solution, rather than trying to fix the problem. You know, rather than getting wise and saying, you know what, maybe I should have more than one income stream. How can I do this better now that they have changed? What can I do? What else can I do for my audience on YouTube? You know, can I make a Patreon page that takes donations? Can I? Uh, sell products on my own. Can I make? Should I make my own website so that I can start promoting that and bring my audience there? So there's, there's lots of other things that you can do, and it's not going to happen overnight. Obviously, it's just this whole change. It's it's been incredible to watch. I'm learning so much. This whole change has been a lesson in a lesson in. It's really about your mindset. Um, if you want to be successful with anything, it's about having a solution, adjusting to the changes. And, and I'll, I'll tell you this, the differences between the people who are, who are going to go on with YouTube and be extremely successful, right, uh, is that they're already adjusting. Like your PewDiePie who has 50, over 50 million subscribers, right, the most ever, right. What he's done is he's switching to another, he's not switching completely, but he has expanded to another platform, Twitch. Uh, real smart move. And then some of the other guys out there, they're also doing the same thing. They're moving to other, not, not moving completely because they love YouTube and they have so much content. They have so much following there, so they're probably not going to shut their channel down. But what they're doing is they're expanding, if they haven't done so already, they're expanding out to Facebook. They're getting more serious about Instagram. They're getting more serious. They're doing things like Amazon Video Direct. They're doing other things because they because there's so many changes. And that's the same thing with the RevShare folks. All your RevShare people out there, what they're doing is they normally have two or three different rev shares going. So if one drops, they've already got these other two that are making money or they have other sources of income that they can use to both expand and as like a safety net for their business and it's like it's like you're in a, it's like they're in an ocean and it's and then the waves kick up right the successful people find a way to surf the wave the changes the waves of the changes the people who panic they drown and um, those those are the like the trolls that start attacking YouTube or and I'm not saying you shouldn't complain about, you know, I mean, of course, these are grievances against YouTube if they make a dumb change. And, you know, of course, you want to reach out and say, hey, YouTube, could you guys please fix this thing? Please, you know, could you, could you guys change this or that? I'm not saying that you shouldn't never have any grievances or never have an opinion on the direction of a rev share or the direction of YouTube ads words or whatever, right? I'm saying that if you take if you don't take action to change to adjust to the changes you're gonna drown you know there's the, the successful people they might be they might be complaining they might be release a video and say man I don't know what YouTube's doing and these advertisers they're complaining about this but all they gotta do is filter it out they're saying they're making videos like that right but at the same time they're already adjusting their they're they're making those complaints while they're on their surfboard <laughs> taking those waves and, and making and making adjustments and I, I guess that's all I really want to say is like 
if you're trying to do this passive income stuff, you can't be a crybaby. Like, you have to make solutions. And as we've been doing more becoming creators, we just noticed that there's, there's some people who will attack you because I think that they attack it because, I mean, number one, they, they probably don't agree with us or whatever, right? Or they feel offended by something we said. But it's like, to me, like for me, I guess my mindset's different. Like if there's somebody out there on YouTube and they said something I don't agree with, but I love this person, I'm, I'm going to approach it in a different way. You know, a good example would be John Tron. Like, John Tron said some extremely inflammatory stuff, you know, about, about uh, minorities. Like, he said a lot of inflammatory things that I don't necessarily agree with. But I love his content. The guy's a brilliant creator. I wouldn't attack him like a troll. You know, I would, I would go and ask him flat out, like, hey, man, what? Why did you say that? Do you really believe that? Or... And then I'd watch him, like, is that going to affect his content? Is that going to change how he does his content? Because I hope not. I mean, I hope he continues to make great, great stuff. You know, because I, you could separate the creator from the creations that they make. I mean, his creations are not inflammatory. They're not political. They're not, you know. So, I guess it. it's like when you're a creator, it's like you've got... When you're a creator, or if you're doing, in, if you're in passive income, if you start doing marketing, if it, it's like whenever you try to step outside the box, is there's people waiting for you, trolls, there's haters, there's people who do not like change, there's people who are gonna doubt you, right? They're gonna doubt you. They're they're gonna they're gonna not be happy with the changes, and sometimes you just gotta let them know, man, with success, because some of these people are people you love. Some of the people you love are going to be saying this stuff. So you can't just write them off. You've got to talk to them. You've got to show them with action. And that's what I've been doing. That's what Yuri and I have been doing in our lives. And I mean, you got to, that's what you have to do if you're going to go this path. You got to step outside of the box. You got to get outside of your comfort zone sometimes. You have to do things that the rest of the masses are not necessarily going to have the guts to do and then you step outside you do those things you take those actions and then you've got the the people who are hating on you or saying you can't make it or saying you can't this or that and you just got to show them for me it, it's like it ignites me i'm like okay i can't do it and then i show them i get out there and i show them and that's how you that's the attitude i think that you have to have uh because it's just human nature you know human we fear change human beings fear change like if there's anything like what we're used to what we've been conditioned to do is work a job be, have a profession get good at it be a good employee pay your taxes that's what we're conditioned to do and if there's anything outside of that that's when you face the criticism that's when you face the haters the trolls the that the doubters the naysayers and that's when you have to step it up a notch you know what i mean and those are the people the people who step it up a notch the people who keep going despite all of those naysayers and and people that you even love and care about your own family and friends even them they'll come at you and say hey you can't do it or why are we doing this i don't want to go this direction the people who succeed are the people who keep going because they believe in their vision so wholeheartedly that they're not going to stop. In fact, they might even go harder because they believe in it so much. Th those are the people who, who survive the storm. You know what I mean? I, there was something I read. I heard one of YouTubers say. It was Think Media. I can't remember his name, but I watch his content every now and then. He's got great stuff. I think he does uh, video, video insider, video. I don't know. Um, but I love his content. Um, good guy. He said, and I think this is a saying he got from somewhere else. He said, "You shouldn't be, you shouldn't be upset about the weather, um, because the weather changes. You know, it's going to be sunny sometimes. It's going to be rainy. It's going to storm. Like your concern should be your clothes. Don't get mad at the weather. Be mad at <laughs> about your clothes. Focus on your clothes. Be prepared." You may have heard this quote before: that there's no such thing as bad weather, only bad clothing, right? So rainy weather is not, I'm not, the, I'm not the favorite. It's not my favorite kind of weather. I'm here in Las Vegas. I, lo I prefer the sun. But I'll tell you when I really hate rainy weather is when I don't have rain clothes. 
However, if you got the right clothes, it's fun. And I guess that's it, guys. This has just been a rant about passive income and, and my experience with it, me and Yuri's experience with how this has been going. Like the attitudes are so clear. And I just want to send a shout out to all the people who have supported us with this, all the people who follow us, all the people who are engaged in this conversation. We have a lot of the stuff that we say, a lot of the topics that we address come directly from our audience. So I want you guys to know that I am listening, we're listening, we read your stuff, um, we, we do interact with you when we can on Facebook, but also on YouTube. And the, the results of these videos come from um, folks like you who are interactive in our community. So I just want to send a quick shout out to our Patreons, people who are directly supporting us. We really appreciate you guys. Um, I want to say um, thank you to all the subscribers, all the people who, who have been liking us. And I want to send a special, special shout out to all the like-minded people out there that we've been meeting along this journey. Um, it's been really a pleasure. You know, to know that we're not alone in this, to not to know that we're not alone in people who want to do things differently with their life. Um, it's it's really changed our lives, guys. Um, it's I don't think that words really can explain. I don't think that words can really express and encapsulate the impact that it's had on our life. Um, all I can do is do these videos and show you show you the changes that have happened and um, hopefully you'll be able to uh, see the impact that it's made and uh, I think that that's it um, I'll, I'll start to try to do more videos on risk management because I know that this channel is supposed to be security channel and it's supposed to be risk management me talking about resumes and stuff like that but I gotta talk about what's happening guys <laughs> alright guys I'll see you later